on your mark, get set. On May 6th, 1954, at the Ifley Road track in Oxford, England, the Englishman Roger Bannister became the first person in history to break the four minute mile barrier a barrier that had been imagined to exist for over 180 years. What is the history of the one mile foot race? What does history tell us about the ingredients necessary to break the four minute mile barrier? Finally, what made Roger Bannister the right person to break this barrier? The first ever recorded one mile foot race took place on July 26th 1785 on London City Road. But it was the invention of stopwatches, designed primarily for timing horse races, that led to understanding of how difficult it would be for a person to run a mile in under four minutes. Both 18th and 19th centuries came and went without a single runner breaking the four minute mile barrier. The runner who came the closest was W.G. George from England. In 1887, he ran what was called the mile of the century in a time of four minutes, 12 and three quarter seconds. Pavo Nurmi from Finland finally broke W.G. George's record in 1922 with a time of four minutes, 10.4 seconds. Julius Ladoumeg from France set the record at four minutes, 9.2 seconds in 1931. Jack Lovelock from New Zealand set the record at 4 minutes, 7.6 seconds in 1933. Glenn Cunningham from the United States set the record at 4 minutes, 6.8 seconds in 1934. Sidney Wooderson from England set the record at 4 minutes, 6.4 seconds in 1937. Between 1942 and 1945, the Swedes Gunder Haig and Arne Anderson swapped records five times until Haig pegged it out for four minutes, 1.4 seconds, where it would stay for the nine years. The race of the four minute mile was a close race to the very end. Roger Bannister broke up the four minute mile on May 6, 1954. His rival, Australian John, John Landy, ran a time of four minutes, two seconds, five times, and a time of four minutes, one second, twice, between December 1952 and April 1954. What were the ingredients necessary for a person to run a mile in under four minutes? After studying the history, we have come up with five things. One, a physically capable athlete. Two, effective training and coaching. Three, a positive psychological mindset. Four, a favorable environment. Five, knowledge of how the human body works. One, Having the physical attributes to run a mile in under four minutes is the most basic ingredient. Roger Bannister obviously had them. Thomas here is looking good, but he is probably not ready to break a four minute mile anytime soon. Two, effective training and coaching arose initially from trial error, then improved dramatically as science improved knowledge of how the human body works. Gunder Haig and Arne Anderson used a system of training developed by their coach, Gosta Olander, that involved fun outdoor runs called fartlicks, which is Swedish for speed play. German coach Waldemar Gerschler developed a system of training known as interval training, in which athletes alternated between fast and slow runs on the track, rather than outdoor trails. This is the method eventually used by Roger Bannister. Three, the science of improving physical performance through psychology or sports psychology was just beginning to be understood. Athletes perform better under pressure of competition when running in groups, when they are in a good mood, and when pursuing goals they know others have already reached. A good mindset is critical for success. 
running against each from 1942 to 1945. Gunder Haig and Arn Anderson took advantage of a technique known now in sports psychology as the group effect. 4. A favorable environment includes both good weather and track conditions, and a political environment in which runners have good athletic facilities, access to good nutrition, and ability to compete widely with other runners. Very little progress was made in improving mile times during World Wars I and II, when the best athletes were sent off to flight and resources for supporting athletic competition were limited. The most progress was made in Sweden, which remained neutral during World War II. 5. Knowing of how the human body works. The human body is a machine and knowing the mechanics, the science of physiology, is critical to understanding how to perform at peak level. What made Roger Bannister the right person to break this barrier? He must have had all five ingredients, right? Not necessarily. Roger Bannister was certainly physically capable, but so were many others before him. Roger Bannister did adopt a little bit of interval training methods of his contemporaries, but he did not do nearly as much training as other runners such as John Landy. He was known and criticized for never taking on a coach. Roger Bannister did not have the benefit of a favorable environment. Amazingly, he broke the four minute mile barrier on a cold, wet, windy day. Roger Bannister's biggest advantage was his knowledge of how the human body worked. This, in turn, gave him a huge psychological advantage over his rivals. He had confidence in the human body and its abilities to run a mile in under four minutes. This is footage of the legendary race of the Ifley Road track where Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile barrier on May 6, 1954. But what gave Roger Bannister the real edge? Where did he gain so much knowledge about the limits of the human body? Where did he get so confident in his ability to run a mile in under four minutes? For those answers, we need to see footage from St. Mary's Hospital, where Roger Bannister spent years performing extensive research in the field of human physiology while studying to become a neurologist. I want to tell you something about St. Mary's Hospital Medical School. It happens to be a hundred years old this year, and it also happens to be the place where I've just qualified as a doctor. But it isn't about that that I want to speak. In the Department of Physiology, where students study the mechanism of the human body, there's sometimes an opportunity for both. These two men, on fixed bicycles, are working hard enough to sweat, and the air they breathe is weighed and measured. it's the amount of carbon dioxide given out which is measured and by working back from this result one can calculate the amount of oxygen taken from the air. Oxygen is the gas which is needed by the body to liberate energy required for movement of any sort. This is part of the elementary study of human breathing, respiration we call it. And of course, it's of special interest to people like me who try to run races. In the end, the story of Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile barrier is a great example of how humans have studied history to gain a better understanding of how to break down barriers to a better future. Job, Thomas. On your mark, get set, go. Today, my brother is going to run a mile. This is a 400 meter track, um, and four laps around is a mile, but oh crap. He can't speak. After studying the history, we have come up with five. What? After studying 